Hey, Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Man. Welcome back to another podcast episode. Let's have a conversation about what reborn again actually means. I think that it's so unfortunate the way we have not understood the word of God and we've been reading for a hundred years and the way some of us have not applied that information to our life to actually live a better life simply because we may not have gotten that understanding This is why I am so grateful to be the host of this platform that the Lord is working with me to give you all the information that we are learning because so many people are going to be lost. And if we are currently still lost or currently still going through things, I believe that is okay as long as we are beginning to get in alignment with God, right? Being reborn again is not us giving up the ghost like I thought, you know, we'd be doing what John doing. We giving up the body, going up to heaven, the Lord walking us around the throne like, yeah, you see what's going on over here. These angels going to come down here. The horse is going to come down here. So I'm thinking we all finna have a John revelation. Amen. I'm thinking that that's how the Lord is going to do us. And he does that. The Lord does that. God is so beautiful. He is so handsome. The Lord does that. He does that in our mind. That same image that when we get from reading, we can see how people go through things and how the Lord helped them and delivered them. We get that in the spirit. We can see visions and have dreams with our eyes open and with our eyes closed when we're resting. When we talk about being reborn again, it's not that initial. See, we don't have to see. That's the beautiful thing about God coming to earth. That's only if you believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. That's only if you believe that we had this is. If we believe that the world was so toxic, like the Lord told us in the beginning when he flooded it, then we believe that the Lord came down here to save our souls. So that way, when we leave, we can be back with him. It's all a belief thing. So us being reborn again, when he talks about you have to be reborn again of your mind, you have to become a new creature when you're in Christ. That's not us having to you know, pass away and give up the ghost and then be created again. It's not a form of reincarnation like that. It's more of the Lord is meeting you where you are right now. The Lord wants to retrain us right now. Man, we probably need drugs, you know, lying, stealing, killing, cheating. I'm not going to lie. I know a few killers. And we get so caught up on trying to judge people. We cannot judge people. We have our own souls that needs to be saved. When the Lord talks about being reborn again, he's talking about retraining you as an adult, but giving you back that child mentality. The reason why the Lord talks so highly of a child mentality as an adult, because you're easier to train that way. He said, train up the child in the way they should go. The Lord wants to do that after we're 18. We only look at the laws of the land. The laws of the spirit is, I believe when we get 18 and our parent, we're supposed to be, see, 18 is an adult age. When you get 18, you're supposed to be driving a car, you know, going to work and finishing school and living and different things like that. A lot of us didn't get that teaching. So what the Lord wants to do is whether you got that teaching or not, the Lord still wants to be your parent, whether you're, you know, whether you have your physical parents or not, the Lord wants to train you. He wants to reprogram us as an adult so we can live the lives that we're really, truly supposed to enjoy. Being reborn again is not for the faint at heart. Of course, I believe you have to get baptized. But even after getting baptized, I encourage you to watch that video. I got baptized and it didn't work. You'll understand more about where that title come from, because that probably sounds crazy, but it is crazy because it's more to it. You just can't get baptized and think you're reborn again of the water. When they were down there getting baptized and John was baptizing, he said he looked over the land and he seen Pharisees and he said, who invited them here? Just like the Lord said during the wedding, he said, who invited y'all to the wedding? See, we are all invited into God to be with him, to love him, to get to know him, to seek him. But at some point, the Lord is going to cut off that form of communication. He know that you plan with him. He knows our hearts. So if we keep playing with God. And he know we plan with him. He's going to cut that off and we do not want to be cut off from the Lord. We think it's bad getting cut off from humans and jobs and relationships. We do not want to get cut off from the Lord. So what he wants to do, being reborn again, 
is allowing the Lord to meet you where you at. You're not crazy. You're not talking to yourself. It ain't just you just letting up loose conversation that's not being caught. The Lord wants to retrain us so we can be more gentle, so we can get rid of some of the diseases, the irritants, the headaches, the heartaches. Being reborn again, it takes time. It takes time. It takes experience. It takes learning. It takes you looking at your trauma and just being tired about the way you're feeling and the way that things are going in your life. So it's a personal decision to want to be different. And everybody's not going to want to be different. Everybody's not going to be around you being different. And that is okay. It's something that you have to take up with that cross when you follow in the Lord. You have to be okay with people not loving you, people not liking you, people hating you. Because that's the same thing that our Lord went through. And he prepared us for that visually when we watch the movies and when we read. He prepared us to let us know when you take up this cross and you walk with me, when you take up this cross and you changing your life to become a new creature, to be reborn again, the people are not going to like you. They're not, but you're going to be safe because the Lord already overcome the world. Being reborn again is simply the Lord trying to teach you how to be sober, how to, you know, take care of your body, how to take care of your mind, your family, your finances. The Lord is just trying to show us how to use our spirit, how to use our energy, how to protect ourselves, how to guard our hearts. And it is easier said than lived. But I honestly believe that as sensitive as the spirit is and we see all these different things going on, I feel like we have to get in some type of alignment and then everything else is not supposed to be. It's going to fall off. And again, that's going to be a little tempting because when you start losing friends and family members and things start getting distant, you're going to want to go back and you might go back. You might go back and talk to a couple people and different things like that. But at some point, you're going to be set free. The Lord wants to set us free. Being reborn again is the Lord setting us free. In our minds, in our bodies, in our spirits, in our soul. That way, when we're happy, we're loving, we're kind, we're gentle, we're able to long suffer. When we have the fruit of the spirit, y'all, that's really what I believe. Like I've been, I started thinking that probably like last year, like the way we live here is the way that our souls will live in the afterlife. If we're sick here all the time, that is a symbol of what's going on. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. That is a sign of what's going on with our soul. If we're physically sick here, our soul is sick. This is way deeper than what we think. If we have a mental illness here, that is spiritual. These things are not just by creation. Like these things are spirits. We done picked up different spirits, a hereditary spirits. That's what you call a generational curse. It's a hereditary spirit that runs through the bloodline, a, usually a demonic spirit. And what that spirit does is it holds you up. It keeps you trapped. It keeps you stuck. It keeps you confused. It's the author of confusion. The things that we go through like stress, headache, depression, those are demons. Those are real life demons. And we expecting it to look different, but it don't look no different than that. Those are silent killers. The Lord wants to show us how to live on earth. So when it's time to give up the ghost, we can go back to living in heaven he is not going to accept us he don't care who you are he don't care the work you've done he told us that in revelation he told us that in jeremiah ezekiel he told us that in proverbs you can be a priest a pastor evangelist and then half of all of y'all are still whores that is what the lord told us and a whore is just not a promiscuous man or woman a whore is a promiscuous man or woman a whore is a man or woman that doesn't like god they deceive god they train people in the wrong ways so I encourage you to watch that seven part series. So why the Lord is upset about his men and women being whores, but understand the Lord is just trying to help us, but you have to invite him in. You have to let him in and being reborn again is going to take time. And when we read, we see that, but that's why we got to keep going and going because the enemy is going to try to stop you. So of course the dude you like, and of course the girl you had a crush on in high school, they finna just spin the block out of nowhere. And now you're trying to get your life together because the enemy is trying to stop you from being reborn again. 
we so caught up on being formal, trying to go to church, telling people, oh, that, you know, the, the church not accepting people. The Lord told us in Matthew, I am the church. He told us in Revelation, you are the church. He said, let the church say amen. When we go in those building doors, it's not the building talking. It's the body of Christ. Come on, Jesus. It's the people. We open our mouths and we say, amen. That's right, pastor. You better get, you better say that word. We are the church. So you might have went into a building and we're not, you know, welcomed in because you may have a spirit on you that people can see just as sexual uh, as homosexuality. You know, sometimes we judge people because we can see their demons. We can see their spirits. But when you can't see somebody demons and you can't see their spirits, you don't judge them until you get to know them. We have to stop looking at what somebody else got going on and we have to mind our business and stay in our office. Being reborn again is a beautiful thing and it doesn't matter how much you have failed. The thing about a child of God, we heard what he said in the song, a saint is just a sinner that failed down but we don't stay down the lord fell with that cross but he didn't stay down I, i'm just throwing everybody closely here today no for real because i love what jesus said he said stay down until you come up you got to stay down until you come up but remember when you come up you always want to remember who got you there i remember uh i think it was in genesis or uh exodus where abraham he was going through the cities and he was doing what the lord told him to do because abraham worked yeah we may not have known that or read that but abraham was a working man like he literally did work in the field and he went the war and everything which is wild we'll talk about abraham love our uncle abraham but but and when abraham was going through people was like oh do you need this do you need that and he said i am fine i am blessed and the lord is with me because the last thing i want to do is give y'all god's glory and say y'all did this y'all got me here that's not what the lord wants us to do so he want to work with us one-on-one -on -one personally that way we know that it wasn't no human around me that made this shake because when we start paying attention to what people are doing, we start worshiping them. And that's where we start praising men. And that's when you lose God's interest. We never want to do that. Of course, people are going to come through and help you. He's going to send people to help you. But you have to be able to distinguish that the Lord did this for me because I communion with him. Alexis Love Beauty is a flawless man. Taking up your cross, the words that we hear, following the Lord, that means to... Carry your sins, carry your burdens, carry what you're going through, and you're going to fall with that cross. But that means to get back up and keep trying and keep going and going and going. So that is being reborn again, carrying those burdens. Come on, Jesus, carrying those burdens and giving them to the Lord. See, we're not carrying our cross to be sacrificed. We don't have to do that anymore. We're carrying our cross to the Lord and we're giving that to him. And in this generation, we're able to give him that cross, give him those burdens, give him those things that's breaking our back. And then we're able to walk away. We don't have to get sacrificed anymore. And that's what some people don't understand, but it's good to understand that a lot of people don't want to read the Old Testament no more because they feel like we're just living in the New Testament. Always read the Old Testament. That is where our history comes from. That is where our family is. That is where our ancestry comes from. That is where the information is. When you begin to do your extended research, always start from the beginning. Don't let anyone persuade you to start at the end because you won't know what happened in the beginning. I love you. God bless you. Being reborn again is a beautiful thing. Get started.